All right, welcome back. So I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm actually gonna be running this back to Whole Foods to return it for Amazon because it came in late and I ended up going to get one from local Best Buy. So I gotta run that errand, but I figured while I'm running this errand, I try something new, something a little bit different with my content and talk about something along the way. So we're just gonna go with it and see how this all turns out. Also got some coffee. So right now I'm actually just gonna talk about my setup here because it's a little, it's sketching me out. Like I know it's fine, but I had recently picked up a six inch suction cup by Newer and I have a small rig magic arm upgrade because the one that comes with Newer isn't the greatest. It's good for other things, but not for holding my very expensive setup that I have on right now, which is the Sony a7 IV with the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter filter or lens. So the issue that I have with this whole scenario right now is the roads in Indianapolis are very, very rough. As I drive, I'm gonna keep looking over at the camera to make sure that it's like nothing's failing. Luckily, the magic arm that I have on here comes with a little tool so you can like really cinch it down and that's what I really like about this magic arm versus the one that newer gives you. I feel like they kind of skimped out on that part. So if you're looking at a suction cup so far, I recommend upgrading the magic arm. But okay, that's not why we're here. That's not what we're gonna talk about. I actually want to talk about a particular subject that I think is important to the overall reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I want to touch briefly on about how it made me feel because it's been kind of a rough day already. I got two photo shoots later today, and generally when I'm in my car, I'm gonna be ranting most of the time. Um, so that's what I'm gonna spend during this time. So uh, hopefully you find some value out of this, and hopefully I feel better at the end of this video. But just a few years ago, when I was 25 years old, I lost my full-time job. My very first corporate job out of college, I lost it. It was during the pandemic. And to give you some backstory, I worked at Uber, like Uber corporate. I wasn't a driver. I worked for the actual company and I worked for them as a contractor when I first started out. And then I became a full-time employee in 2017. So I started in like 2015. And then in 2017, I was a full-time employee and I was with them when they became public. So I was around for the IPO got these really cool special edition jackets. Like I had all this Uber swag from working for them. So I've been there for a minute. During the pandemic, my wife was an ICU nurse and she was working like 60 plus hours a week. Leading up to that, she had the ambition of becoming a travel nurse. And then I had the ambition of moving up within Uber and going to a different city. I just didn't know what city for a little bit and then I decided on Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. But to get there, I had to apply for jobs at Uber because where I was, it was just an operational role where I was talking with drivers every single day. I was a manager for the last stint of my time there. And so I had to deal with a lot of crazy stuff. And there's a lot of crazy stories that I have experienced working for that company, but I wanted to move up into more higher level operations. And so I kept applying for these jobs and going through these interviews. And I just remember I kept getting told no. And this company was really pushing on hiring from within and promoting from within. And I felt like, I was like, okay, well, I have all these accolades that match the description of these positions. I have this experience with this company. I mean, I've been here for a long enough time where I feel like I could move into something different. And like, I really wanted to grow and learn and be better at what I do. But it just, it never really freaking happened. And it really pissed me off. Like I, I would stay at the office late some evenings to interview with people from San Francisco because that's where the headquarters is. And I remember I'd get out of the office at like eight o'clock at night and feel really good about this interview, get really good feedback. I feel like I'm at least gonna move on to the next step and then absolutely nothing. So I just felt robbed of the opportunity to grow within a company that I was so fond of and this entire time I was working for this company, I was thinking to myself, like, I want to move up in this company. I want to stay at this company for my entire career because my entire career is not going to be 30 years. I had the intention of leaving corporate work at some point. 
I didn't have like a specific timeline in mind because at the time I was only making like $48,000 a year and it wasn't enough to put a decent amount of money away. So I really needed to move up in the company and grow my skills, grow my income so that way I could move on and start a business and go do something different, you know? So Uber was supposed to be my one and only corporate job. I just was trying so freaking hard and I just felt like I was getting absolutely nowhere. And then obviously at the beginning of 2020, everything locked down and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. It's temporary, but I you know, started working from home and we were going from working with drivers to now making menus for Uber Eats because the Uber Eats team was really, really backlogged on getting these restaurants onboarded because during the pandemic, you couldn't go out to eat. You could only order. And so I felt like, oh, this is really cool. I can get this experience. I can see how other parts of the company work and maybe I can find a role in these other parts of the company. But after, I think it was like March 13th when everything locked down and then a couple weeks before May, we had a all hands call with the CEO who I think is still CEO. And they were talking about the health of the company. They were talking about like, hey, we have this much of unrestricted cash. And I don't know if it's public information, so I'm not gonna say how much it was, but it was a lot of money that made everybody feel like that we were going to be okay. Then a couple weeks later, we were having a smaller team meeting with my direct manager and then all my coworkers, because we were all managers. And we were talking about like, we think that cuts are gonna happen in the company, but we felt like we were safe because what we did was very important. Like we were the direct face of the communities within the cities that we worked in. So there's no way that they would cut us first. Man, I, I shit you not. What was it, two days later? May 5th, I woke up and I, at the time I was living in an apartment and uh, my, my little office desk was in my room. And I just remember looking at my computer and I had my notification pop up with meeting with HR. And I immediately knew, it's like, this is it. I'm getting cut today. And I hopped on this call. I think it was at like nine o'clock in the morning or something. And it was just this one lone HR rep who was sitting there completely quiet, video was on. So you could just see this look on her face like something bad is about to happen. And she went through her whole dialogue of what she had to say for legal reasons and let us all know that we were losing our jobs today. I remember in that conversation, the director of operations hopped on and she was in tears. And that told me that she had no idea it was going to happen. Like, I think at a high level, we the company knew that they were eventually gonna make cuts to the operations team, but the pandemic accelerated it. And so she probably knew at some point it was gonna happen, but she didn't know like that day it was going to happen. And I just remember watching this person break down to 3,700 people. So I was, I was part of the first wave, 3,700 people were laid off. And afterwards, I just remember, um, I texted Jackie, my now wife, we were dating at the time, and she had just got off of her third 12 hour shift for the week, or it was probably her fifth actually, because she was working like 60 hour weeks. And for a while we couldn't see each other. So now we're able to see each other. Quarantine thing was kind of over for us. And I just remember texting her and I was like, I just got fired. We lived in the same apartment building at that moment, which was very convenient for us. And so she just came over to my apartment after she got off working 12 hour shift for like the fifth time in a row. And she was watching people die every single day. So for her to come home and then see me in shambles and like, I just lost my fucking job. I just started breaking down. I was like, what the fuck? You know, I was just like to myself, I was thinking what in the actual fuck is happening? I went through all this pain, all this torture. I dealt with all the crappiest things I could ever deal with working for any company. And I talk about like looking for a job. I talk about the things that I had to deal with in my current position. It just, I made me so jaded that I despised everything that I did as a job. Like the people I worked with, the people I managed, I really enjoyed. But everything else about that job, I 
hate it so much. And I was just trying to find a way out. And so I get laid off. They gave me a really good severance package that set me up. And, you know, honestly, before this, I set myself up for success because I saw the writing on the wall. Like I knew something was gonna happen. And I'll, I'll talk about that here in a moment. But they set me up for success to be able to take some time off, you know, make sure I'm taken care of, and then look for a new job. And so I decided to take three months off before I started looking for a new job. And during that time, I would be with Jackie, we'd go out, do something, come back, and we'd be sitting in her car, and I would just immediately break down crying and screaming. And I just remember screaming like, why me? Like all the years, all the stress I went through, everything I was told about going to college, getting a degree, getting a job, being secure, just felt like a complete and utter lie. And so there are a few instances of that where I just completely had a meltdown. But during that time, I picked up my camera again and I was taking more pictures, I was doing video stuff for my friends. And I remember my one of my best friends of over 20 years. Oh God. I hate these roads, hold on, told me that I seemed more happy doing what I was doing, like the photography, the photography and the videography stuff, than I did working for that company. And I, I was, I was extremely more happy because I, I felt like this stress was taken off my shoulders. The part of the company I was trying to move into in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, completely shut down. The department that it was got sold to another company. Like it completely got disintegrated. And I, I think back now and I think about how I could have been stuck in a completely different state with no job, no support system around me because all my family and friends are here in Indiana and I would have been screwed. Like Jackie would have been with, with me because as a nurse, she is able to move from state to state. So we had this whole plan. We had this whole idea of we were gonna go start a new life in a new city and just try it out for a few years and see if we liked it. And it just completely disintegrated. So I'm fortunate enough to not have gone there and moved my entire life to Texas. I was thinking about how I was more happy. And after the first few days, and, the fir and well, actually maybe the first couple of weeks of not having a job, I was just thinking to myself, I'm actually better off. Like this was a blessing in disguise because I was more scared of going back to my job than I was to lose it. And it's because the work that I did, I was not passionate about. I sat in my office, wasting away every single day, watching YouTube videos, you know, consuming financial content at one point. And I just remember like, I wanna go create something. I was watching other YouTubers do all these cool things. I was trying to learn how to grow a YouTube channel. And I was taking all these notes down, but I never put it to practice because by the end of the day, I was so fucking exhausted. I didn't wanna do anything. And it made me realize that the amount of time that I put into that job ruined me creatively. And now that I had a few months off and I could you know, explore my creativity a little bit more, I felt so much better about it. And I was like, I, I don't want this feeling to go away. So I decided that from there, I was going to push myself to find more time to be creative, to enjoy the things that I enjoy. And I realized during that time, I want to be in more control of my life. Like I've always had this inclination to own my time, own my freedom, be financially independent, but I didn't know what any of that meant. I didn't know how to do any of it because all this stuff was taboo in my family. Like we never talked about money. I never knew how much my dad or my mom made ever. And so I was just like, how am I to know how to gain control of my life and my finances if I never talked about it or learned about it growing up? So during this time, I consumed a lot of financial content, which I started doing that before I lost my job. And this is where it's important. So if you take anything out of this video, this is where I want you to take information from. To do what I do now, like to invest money into a business to try to start it up, like this creative business that I'm starting or I have started and I'm working on, you need a lot of capital. And during this time, when I saw the writing on the wall, I took a lot of money and I put it into investments. I started watching Graham Stephan and I started consuming a lot of his content. I learned about index funds and I learned about emergency funds, like being actually able to put money away in an emergency fund. 
And before I lost my job, I built up enough emergency savings to last me for about a year between hard cash and liquid assets. And then when I lost my job and I got a severance, that set me up for another six months to where I could be without a job for a year and a half. And in that year and a half, I could have done anything. I could have taken on a new business, I could have taken on a new job, I could have done anything I wanted to. And during that time, the government actually was still giving us extra unemployment benefit. And I've never been unemployed before. So I was receiving that benefit and I was like, holy crap, this is great. I'm gonna live off of this, save my money I've already saved, and I'm just gonna pretty much double dip, right? I didn't get it the entire time because the first month I was laid off, they still paid my salary. So I wasn't officially unemployed until June. So I couldn't take benefit at all from that. And then I had the extended benefit for like a month or two maybe. And then at the end of that, I was like, okay, the, the well is dried up, let's go get a job. And I won't talk about that in this video because I think this video is already pretty long, but I went and got a shitty part-time job at a warehouse and then ironically enough, I bought a second car so I could do Uber Eats because I was like food delivery on the side, I know how everything works. I wasn't legally allowed to do anything uh, while I worked for Uber, so I waited till afterwards and it was pretty cool. Um, I was able to make enough money to cover my normal living expenses. I hated the job that I had, but I did it for a little while before I got my next corporate job, which I'm still at to this day. So when I talk about like the, the financial side of things, when I set myself up for success, for the last five years, we've built a foundation financially to where we can do whatever it is that we want comfortably. And we're not quite to the point where we're completely independent of our jobs, like we still rely on them. But if an emergency comes up, we can pay for it. And that's not meant to be a flex, it's meant to be like a statement, like we are only able to do that because of the choices we made financially for the last five years. And we still have an emergency fund, like we've had to dip into it again for our house. And no, it's not fun. Oh, I went to the wrong parking lot. But we do it because we can and we have that choice to do it. So when I picked up this camera, brand new, and I invested a lot of money into it, I told myself, I was like, this is, this is a really big purchase. Like, I shouldn't be doing this because fiscally it didn't seem responsible. I'm gonna park over here. I like to park away from people because I don't trust people with, when it comes to opening their doors. So we're gonna park like right about here maybe. Okay, I actually have to go return this thing real quick. So I will be right back. Now that it's out of the way, hopefully there's something contextual here with what I'm talking about. Cause I know I'm really just going off of a rant right now. I actually have talking points that I wanted to talk about. So I don't know how long this video is, but if you're still here, I appreciate it. I really do. This is very much off the cuff and more of a rant than anything, but I really hope that there's something of value in this video for anybody out there who's been in a similar position as me or is currently in the same position as me. Because when I was talking about like having the choice to do things, when I took the choice to purchase this camera to start this creative business, I told myself that I was no longer gonna treat photography as a hobby like I had for the first six years of my experience with it. And I stumbled across some amazing creators who I have learned a lot of stuff from. I want to implement a lot of that into my own business. I want to be creative. I want to control my life. I, I want to be financially independent. And since then, you know, Jackie and I have done a lot and we've gotten to a point now where we're comfortable with where we're at. We just had a kid and we were able to afford to have a kid because again, of the financial choices we've made over the last five years together. And so, we're currently on a path to where we can become financially independent. Not like next year, but within the next 10, 15 years, I would imagine we would be there. And so if you're looking to do anything with your life, it doesn't have to be starting a business. It doesn't have to be uh, super specific like that. It can just be whatever it is that you want to do. It's very, very important to save up money in order to give you the choice. Like if I overextended myself when purchasing this camera, I would have been stressed. 
but I wasn't stressed because I was able to pay for it outright. I didn't put myself in the debt. Everything I own, I own. Like the only debt that we have is our mortgage, the small amount of student loans that we have left, and then we recently got a garage built for our house, which that's an investment more than a sunk cost. And we're aggressively paying that off to where it'll be paid off in two years rather than six years. So we're doing everything we do so that we have no debt, not a lot of overhead, and we can go and do the things we wanna do. And when I decided to do this business and start investing money into it, I gave myself this set budget. A set budget that is not gonna hurt me, that is not going to put me into debt, and it's going to be a slow burn because obviously I'm not monetizing a whole lot right now as a business, but eventually it will monetize more to the point where I don't have to completely subsidize my business with my full-time job. It's all about setting yourself up financially for success. And this all stemmed from being completely helpless, being you know completely shot down by a company that I thought I was going to grow within and do well within and eventually leave to pursue my own dreams. And they completely shot that out of the air. And I, I told myself, I was like, I do not ever want to feel that way again. And so taking more control over my life, I want to control where I live. I want to control what I do. I want to control what kind of job I have. I want control over the majority of my life rather than have somebody else control that part of my life. I'm making it my purpose to invest as much as I can in other things because then at, at a certain point, even if I'm not monetizing a whole lot of money from my creative business, I'll have the choice to leave my job. Like I don't need to make as much as I make right now in order to live. Like I can make far less. And that's the goal. Like I honestly am trying to just get to a certain threshold, which is $30,000. Like I'm just trying to get to $30,000 of monetization through my creative business, whatever it is. And at that point, I can start thinking about like, okay, when could I exit the workforce? Could I do it sooner rather than later? Or do I just hold on for a little bit longer because I need a financial runway that's gonna last long enough to where I can really jump in full time, take advantage of it and make it successful. So that's just kind of like where I'm at. And you know, like I got completely shafted by my previous company and you know, I don't care anymore. Well, I didn't care after a little while, but looking back, I'm so glad that I'm not there. It's a great company, don't get me wrong. It's just the job I was doing, I wasn't, I wasn't very thrilled about it and I felt like I was stuck. And right now I, I still feel stuck, but the kind of stuck where like, I don't wanna be a corporate worker. I want to be my own business person, my own owner of something. And the creative business is something I've always wanted to try and now that I've been doing it for a year, it's been great. I'm not making a lot of money from it, don't get me wrong, but it's been great nonetheless. And as I figure out like how I'm gonna do everything, how I'm gonna reduce my stress, how I'm gonna reduce my workload, when I do end up going full time, I'll have more time with my family. I'm 30 years old and my daughter just turned three months yesterday and I wanna watch her grow up I work remotely, so I have that for going for me. But I wanna watch her grow up, I wanna be a part of her activities, and I wanna do all these things that I didn't get to do a whole lot of when I was a kid. And to be able to do that, like that's gonna take a long time to get there. But I hope by the time she's like five, six years old, I have that choice to leave my full-time job. I mean, granted, I actually would like to be able to have the choice to leave my job within the next year. That's kind of like the ultimate goal, but whether or not that's gonna actually happen, I have no idea, but we'll see. Until then, I'm gonna keep making videos that I'm interested in. I hope that you enjoyed this off the cuff kind of video. And you know, honestly, I might get home, I might put this up on my computer and look at it and not even wanna post it. So if it's posted, then I liked it enough to put it out there. I know it's very deep, I know it's very serious, but dude, what you see on social media is just one snippet of everybody's lives. And I'm just giving you a story of how much my life sucked for a short while. And now I'm in a better position than I was even before I lost my job. So if you're feeling the same way, like you're feeling stuck, hopefully this helped you. 
but you know if you want to know more about like the nitty-gritty details of what we did to set ourselves up financially to set myself up to be able to do what I do right now in my spare time just you know let me know in the comments below um, but till next time um, I'll see you later peace I forgot I had coffee that lady just like pulled out in front of the truck that probably wasn't gonna stop she was bold <laughs>